Shortly after he rode out of district, de Merle began to suspect that he was indeed being followed. For a moment, he thought he saw a dark figure moving from doorway to doorway, following in the shadows. His instincts had served him well in his long life, and he'd learned to rely on those inner feelings, rather than dismissing them as his imagination. Turning a corner, he paused long enough to hide the box he'd been given, under a gap below the bench seat. If anyone stopped him, they'd have some searching to do. He urged the horse forward. Tomole entered the center of the city, where the great library and massive council buildings stood, monuments to fallen gods, beautiful fountains of living water, and open plazas were thronged with inhabitants come to worship, do business, or see the sights. Trying not to be distracted by the grandeur, de Mole checked discreetly behind him to see if he could spot his pursuer again. He was unsuccessful. He tried to make the horse go faster, but the crowds of people made it difficult to achieve more than a slight increase in pace. All he had to do was get to the Egyptian temple complex without being intercepted. He risked another glance back, but it was not until he returned his eyes to the way ahead that he saw what he instantly recognized as his pursuer. Somehow it had gotten in front of him and was standing by a huge column devoted to Zeus. The man-shaped creature stood motionless, watching as the cart approached. A dark green hooded cloak concealed some of its features from the curious. However, Timole could see dark grey skin with a hint of green that looked wet and glistened when the light hit it the right way. The creature's arms had no bones and seemed to be just massive flexible muscles. Its bulbous head was larger than a normal man's. Three orange eyes empty of pupils were stacked in a triangle shape, two where one might expect them to be and one located in the center of its forehead. The cloak covered it to the ground, but its movements seemed more like scuttling than running as it suddenly approached. It had chosen the perfect spot to intercept the cart. There was no avoiding passing his pursuer, short of stopping and trying to get back up in the middle of the street. De Merle whipped his horse, gambling that he might be able to rush by what lay in wait before it had a chance to act. But it was ready and charged forward, jumping like a spider into the back of the cart as it sped by. De Mole unsheathed his knife, ready to use it. He swung his arm back to slice at the creature, but he missed, slicing only empty air. He was immediately grabbed from behind and slammed onto the back of the cart. As he was pulled over onto his back, the reins went with him, jerking the horse to stop in the street. The knife fell from his hand and dropped into the front of the cart. The creature loomed over him as it stood on his shoulders, holding him down. It extended its tendrils. <sighs> Give me box. What box? The creature flew into a rage, hitting Demole across the face as it screamed. It was like being hit with a heavy knotted rope. The beating moved to his arms and torso, giving him bruises that would last for weeks. Get box now. All right, all right. I, I'll get it. Demole's brain raced, trying to concoct a way to escape with the box if the creature allowed him an opening to retrieve it. He extended an aching arm toward the front of the cart, as if he were actually reaching for the item. Suddenly, the entire cart was engulfed in a blue energy blast. It tipped violently to the left and shifted about eight feet to that side. Both de Mole and the creature were sent sprawling to the pavement as the horse neighed loudly and staggered, tangled in its tack. Idiots! Get out of the way next time you play in the street! A young boy god in a golden horse-drawn carriage yelled at them his head protruding from a side window. His finger was still crackling with blue energy as his driver barreled on past. Several other carts and chariots quickly went by as the way had now been opened. Ignoring the ruckus, de Mole scrambled for his knife, which he spotted lying in the street only a few feet away. He grabbed it and jumped on the creature which had fallen on its back. Its tentacles flailed like the legs of an upended bug. Who sent you? De Mole demanded holding the knife at the creature's throat as he knelt on one of its tentacles and pinned the other with his arm. Answer. After a few seconds pause, it finally replied. Set. The mole pondered this for a second. It made sense. Set was Egyptian, as was the rightful owner of the box the mole guarded. Perhaps Set wanted the item, though it was equally possible that this creature wanted the box for his own reasons. Set hired you, did he? Why you? Always success. 
I ask no questions. I guess you were hired just like I was, Demele said begrudgingly. On some level, he felt empathy for his attacker, despite or perhaps even because of its inhuman appearance. I should kill you, but what happens if I don't? Will you go back to whatever hole you crawled out of and leave me be? Demole pressed a knife at the creature's throat as it stared at him with those soulless orange eyes. Leave. I leave. Yes. It answered. Very well. I wasn't planning to kill anyone today. Withdrawing the knife from the creature, Demole stepped back, still wary of what it might do. Slowly the grey man thing rose, then backed away, preparing to move off. It turned as if to go, then suddenly swung one of its massive tentacles right at Demole's head. It connected solidly, flinging Demole backward. He hit hard against the horse cart, falling to the ground. With the knife he managed to hold onto as the creature had struck, Demole sliced off the end of a tendril. Black liquid gushed out of the wound. Unfazed, the misshapen creature rushed him. Demole tasted blood in his mouth as tentacles wrapped around his neck and lifted him off the ground. His arms dangled uselessly at his sides. His knife was still in his hand, but he was unable to use it. Held by his neck, his feet hanging inches off the ground, Demole stared in panic at the hideous grin on the creature's face. Foolish. Now I crush neck. Take box. Demole struggled to no avail as his face turned crimson and the creature tightened its grip. Desperately, he gasped for air, but none came. His vision started to go black around the edges, as though he was looking through a shrinking tunnel. As he began to lose consciousness, he managed a last attempt to break free. Swinging his feet forward and getting a sideways foothold on the creature's chest, Demole then brought his other leg up and sent a crushing kick into the creature's face with his booted heel. The kick took it completely by surprise and destroyed one of its eyes the orange orb turning into black jelly under his boot. Screaming in pain and shock, the creature released its hold on Demole and he dropped into the back of the cart, gasping for breath. The thing staggered backwards as it held its tentacle over the leaking wound that had once been an eye. Demole gasped for air as he lay in the cart. He could hear the creature's continued screams and the slapping of its flailing tentacles. He knew his escape was only temporary. Demole managed to rise taking a flying leap off the cart right at the creature. Holding the knife in both hands, Demole thrust it down into its head. It broke through the enemy's skull like an arrow going into a watermelon. He set the knife in deeply and fell off the creature as it writhed. It staggered forward and almost ran into some onlookers as blood gushed out around the protruding knife. Within a few seconds, it was covered in the black liquid. It fell to the ground, gurgling its tentacles still searching for its victim's neck. Demole lay on the ground trying to catch his breath, exhausted. He was bruised, cut, and his neck hurt like hell. But he would recover. A small crowd had gathered, muttering to each other as they pointed at the carnage. One of them, a priest of Artemis, stood over him. Don't move. I've summoned a guardian. I won't. Demole managed to get out between gasps of air. He barely looked at the priest as he tried to recover from the fight. Slowly he caught his breath and was able to sit up, gathering his strength. That's the last time I show an opponent mercy. Next time I'll just kill them. Mercy almost cost me my life, he angrily muttered, staring at a smear of his own blood on the street. 